Hey guys, welcome to shop this fine Christmas Eve. Hope everything uh, is going well here and that uh, finds you all healthy and well. Wanted to do a quick video here. Um, A-Bomb79, Adam Booth, did an interesting video a while back on his Evaporust uh, soaking tank. And it was my first um, introduction to Evaporust. And I did some pricing into it. As you can see, I've got this older Warner and Swayze turret lathe that we picked up here for here at the shop a while back. And uh, it was pretty rusty. It had been sitting in a barn probably 20 years with no heat. And uh, well, you can see from the data tag up here, uh, you can see what we were dealing with. Nice heavy rust. Uh, the ways here, there, this lathe's got quite a bit of wear in it. Um, the ways were pretty rusty, and I spent some time with 600 grit sandpaper, polishing them up, cleaning them, oiling them down, uh, getting all the gunk off of them, paint, that sort of stuff. Same way with these drive shafts. They had some nasty rust on them, which you can still see over here. It's still pretty rusty, but we polished them up, got some penetrating oil on there. And so, like the cross slide, the turret, uh, we're all gummed up. I mean, here's the, here's the turret. We haven't yet to clean that up. You can see how nasty that is. And uh, anywho, the cross slides on these have a, have a square turret as well that sits on top like this. It's a four-way tool holder, tool post holder, pretty similar to what you would see on, a, on any other lathe, the older lathe. You'll either see these four ways or you'll see a, a lantern style. And uh, this, for those who don't know, there's a handle and rod with a cam mechanism in here. You're supposed to be able to loosen and then turn this thing. Well, not only the handle and rod kind of turned, but uh, the mechanism, there's a plunger. There's a plunger that fits into four detents to index that into place. That thing didn't move. It was, it was locked up. In fact, I got the rod driven out of it and uh, it still wouldn't move, couldn't get it apart. We ended up, I'm not proud to say, I ended up using a hammer along this edge here to drive up around, because I'd soaked this thing with oil. I mean, it was married, it was there. Well, as you can see, it doesn't look too bad now. We got it all cleaned up, and uh, it turns pretty good at this point. And uh, I was gonna soak this in Evaporust, do it like what, like what Adam did. Um, these bolts here were the clamping bolts. These things were just red with rust. I'd use a wrench. I mean, they were just in there like that. I'd use a wrench all the way out to get them out. They were locked in there. Um, this hand wheel completely covered in rust. This dial, you could not even read it. And I mean, I know the lighting isn't real good in here, but you can see, you can read this now. Um, couldn't read that at all. This handle was just red with rust. So... I, I looked into Evaporust. Well, that stuff's running in gallon jugs. It's about 25 bucks a gallon thereabouts. You can get it cheaper online, but then you end up paying to ship it. So it really isn't cheaper than just going to TSC. Five gallon pails are about 100 bucks. I figured I was going to need about 10 gallons to, to get enough in the bottom of a 55 gallon barrel to submerge this stuff. Not to mention that old girl over there, that, that saddle for the turret, that's going to need probably 20 gallons in a barrel to submerge it. Or I'm off to make some sort of tray. Well, I dared to start doing some research because I'm tight. And uh, Evaporust is pretty tight-lipped about what's in there. But one thing I did find out was that uh, somebody mentioned that it's, a, it's not just an acid, it's a chelating agent. And uh, that, that struck me as uh, familiar sounding because I had seen it before in my years as a mechanic in this product here. It's a Fleet Guard product, also known as Guts Division of Cummins. Restore Plus, not Restore, Restore Plus. And if you look at the back of it, it says, it's an acid-based chelating cleaner designed to remove heavy rust and corrosion. Uh, we use this a lot in cooling systems. Uh, if they've had an oil leak, like an oil cooler or a head gasket where the cooling system gets all gummed up, um, or if it's been poorly maintained like tractors, somebody's been running straight water in them for years, you know, and the thing's just choked, choked full of rust. This will take the rust out. You run this for 15, 20 minutes, bring it up to operating temperature, let it run for about 20 minutes, and it will come out brown. And you could have flushed that thing with straight water until you were blue in the face. You put this in, it comes out brown or black. And the, and the insides will be just be beautiful. And it's good for one gallon treats uh, up to 10 gallons of cooling system capacity. 
So I took this old jug here, filled it, I took it, dumped it in this barrel, filled it up nine more times, dumped her in. So we have 10 gallons of water mixed with this. And then the stuff you saw over there, some of that stuff's been in this barrel for, oh, well, this is Tuesday since last Wednesday. Some of it's been in there for close to a solid week. But that, that turret assembly I just showed you, this spins free. I did no scrubbing, zero. I took it apart, I got it apart, and I put it in rust, gunk, grease and all in there. And let her sit for almost a week. And well, I can see in here, I don't see, look at that. I mean, that, that, that's like butter. I mean, now it does have penetrating oil on it now. I mean, it is water-based cleaner. You take it out of the water, you hose it off, you want to get all that stuff off there, blew it off with a blowgun, and then hosed it down with penetrating oil. In my case, I'm using Freol, which is stuff, most penetrating oil, if you ask me, is snake oil. This stuff does seem to work pretty good. I've actually had good luck with it, better than most, but whatever trips your trigger, Croil I've heard is good. I mean, WD-40 is good for this. I mean, it's a cheap way to keep stuff from rusting, but... I don't think it does much as an oil itself, just a more of a rust preventative. Fluid film would probably work really good for this. But, uh, I mean, you can still see the dirt and grime on here yet that we didn't even clean off. It just got soaked. So, this thing here was stuck fast in there. I did not realize until I pulled it out and it fell out on the floor that this is actually a separate piece. Water got in there and ate the rust out. So, that jug of Restore Plus that you saw over there, um, you can buy it from a Freightliner dealer. Uh, or just about any Cummins dealer. Interestingly enough, most John Deere dealers actually carry this. Uh, John Deere doesn't have a product like this, but John Deere does have partnerships with Fleet Guard because they do use Cummins engines and some John Deere equipment, like the new uh, 620RXs and their choppers from over the years. The, John, or the Cummins part number is CC2638. That's for the gallon jugs, or they have a CC2637, which is in 55-gallon drums if you're so inclined. That gallon jug from, um, well, West Michigan International is like $25.99 uh, from our local John Deere dealer. It's about $35. But either way, $35 diluted into 10 gallons comes out to $3.50 a gallon. Evapo Rust is going to be, I mean, best case scenario, five gallon buckets, you're going to be paying 20 bucks a gallon. So 200 bucks for 10 gallons of Evapo Rust. 35 bucks if you buy it from the deer dealer for 10 gallons of this stuff um, Honestly, I think it's kind of a wash this stuff stinks and kind of smells like vinegar That's uh, probably because it does have phosphoric acid in it uh, Right there keep out of the reach of children. It has phosphoric acid um, I wore rubber gloves dealing with it. Honestly, I worked on, I've worked on cooling systems for years where you've flushed it with that and then rinse it out and it doesn't even really irritate my hands um, but it's probably a good idea to use rubber gloves so uh, yeah this stuff seems to work good every bit as good as evaporust maybe a little slower it's designed to be used in a cooling cooling system where it's heated but uh, I mean if you had a tank that you could heat a plastic barrel didn't strike me as a good idea to heat so I just left it room temperature and this shop is about 65 to 70 most of the time so not exactly super warm this time of year so give it a try um i don't think you can go wrong it seems to do the, the results seem to be about the same as uh as uh, evapor rust as the videos i've seen of evapor rust and it's a way cheaper option for you if you're on a budget so yeah uh, I look forward to any feedback you might have. One thing I'd like to try at some point is I'd like to get some uh, calcium, or not calcium, excuse me, some tetrasodium EDTA. Uh, rumor has it that's what the chelating agent is in Restore Plus um, and also in Evaporust. And tetrasodium EDTA dissolved in water would not have any acid content, so then you would be safe for your hands. Um, EDTA is often used in shampoo, and in, it's also a preservative. I happen to know that Calcium EDTA is used in uh, uh, ranch, Meyer brand ranch dressing <laughs> for whatever reason. It says to preserve flavor, so I guess whatever. But uh, um, that's pretty cheap. You can get a five pound bag of that in powdered form on, uh, on eBay for about 30 bucks. And supposedly uh, with EDTA, 
it'll it's pound for pound with what it removes in rust. So a pound of EDTA will remove a pound of rust, which honestly is quite a bit of rust. So um, I may try that, but try a bag of that dissolved in like a whole 55 gallon drum when I go to put that big saddle and that turret in. That way I can completely submerge both of them and uh, and see what happens. So. Well, have a Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to try to get more videos up more often uh, if I can. Um, so uh, let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd like to see. We work, we got a heavy equipment shop here. We work on trucks and tractors here at Grand Junction Mechanics, Centerville, Michigan, uh, sprayers. And then uh, we've also got a small machine shop here. With, got a couple, a couple of lathes and shaper that we're rehabbing and milling machines, stuff like that. So. Merry Christmas, and until next time, have a good one, and be safe.